Hi, I'm Nelson from Dundas and I'm here to show you our latest product, Dundas Dashboard. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the main features in Dundas Dashboard and demonstrate how you can build a simple dashboard from start to finish within minutes. I hope this will show you just how easy this application is to use and also how quickly you can get dashboards up and running. For this example, we're going to build a simplified dashboard for a fictitious company called Synatica. We're going to walk through the process from the beginning and focus on building two out of the four visualizations that you see here. You'll learn how to build a gross margin percentage gauge, which displays margins for our most recent month, and the revenue versus expenses bar chart. We're also going to allow dashboard viewers to choose what range of dates they want to see on the bar chart. This is the home screen, which is what you'll see when you first log on to Dundas Dashboard. You'll notice in the sidebar and in the quick start guide in the content pane that we've organized tasks according to their various job roles. We've designed this application to allow database administrators, business analysts, and dashboard designers to focus on their specific roles and thus implement dashboard projects rapidly. The first step in implementing a dashboard project is to connect to your organization's data source by creating a data connector. The SQL Server 2005 database that we're using for this example is also used in our dashboard design video, our online demo, and our video tutorials. Once you enter the name of your server, you can choose between using Windows Integrated or SQL Server Security. After you select the database that you want to use, simply test the connection, save the data connector, and then allow Dundas Dashboard to automatically discover your database's data schema. Now the database administrator is ready to consolidate and prepare this data on virtual views called virtual tables. We're going to call this one revenue and expense, which takes two tables, expenses and revenues by month, and joins them into one virtual table. To join them, we'll have to define how these two tables are related, so we're going to add a relationship, choose a parent and child table, interjoin the two, and select month as the column we're going to use to relate them. The database administrator can now create friendly names for the columns, hide unnecessary ones, and even create custom fields. We're going to create a custom field called gross margin percentage, which is just a simple margin calculation. You can also reorder these fields to make them more readable and then generate the query and preview the data. You can now see that we have revenues, expenses, and gross margins by month all on one uniform tabular view that's easy for the business analyst to read. Once you're done, you can check in this virtual table, which will expose it to the project so business analysts can use it to build any number of KPIs. This saves your business analysts from having to dig through and familiarize themselves with the data sources every time they want to build or modify something. Now, the business analysts can proceed with the next phase, creating dimensions and KPIs. Let's take a look at the dashboard we're trying to build. The revenue versus expenses bar chart displays revenue and expenses by month over a period of months. Our x-axis, in other words, is time. We're going to build a time dimension called monthly time. This will allow dashboard viewers to customize the range of dates they want to see on the bar chart by year and by month. We can also change the way these dates are displayed on the dashboard in the formatting tab. Then it's just a matter of previewing the dimension to verify the hierarchy of years and months and then checking it in. Let's have a look at the dashboard again. The two visualizations we're trying to create are representations of two different KPIs, gross margin and revenue and expense by month. Let's start with the gross margin KPI. The KPI setup wizard allows business analysts to select a virtual table as a source and then choose measures and contextual measures based on the columns that the database administrator exposed. For this KPI, we're going to use gross margin percentage as the default measure and month as the instant dimension. Default visualizations can be recommended as a way of letting the dashboard designer know how this KPI was intended to be displayed. If you look at the gross margin gauge, you'll notice that different ranges of values are marked with different colors to indicate the state of the KPI. Defining these states during the KPI definition phase allows the business analyst to show that margins less than zero are considered negative or red on the gauge, margins between zero and 12 are normal, 
and that margins greater than 12 are strong. Now it's just a matter of defining some sorting rules so the KPI displays the most recent month first. We can now preview the KPI, which shows gross margins and the respective states by month, and we can now check it in. The last KPI we're going to create is the Revenue versus Expenses KPI with an M in parentheses to indicate that it's a monthly KPI. We're going to use the Revenue and Expenses virtual table again, select Revenue as the measure, Expenses as the contextual measure, and Month as our instant dimension. Now we're going to take the instant dimension we used earlier, month, and replace it with the time dimension that we created, called monthly time. We can now define filters for this dimension, which will allow dashboard viewers to customize how they want the data to be displayed. Now it's just a matter of previewing this KPI to make sure everything is correct, and then checking it in.